Hello, and welcome to the first episode of a new series, which you may or may not continue with, <laughs> with us just sort of ranting about terrible shows and you know, films or whatever, really. So, what are we looking at today, Alex? We are looking at Fate, the <laughs> Winx the saga. Yeah, just the concept of Fate. <laughs> no, Fate, the Winx saga. Which is the Fletnik Netflix Fletnik's. Fletnik's show, hmm. um, based on the Italian cartoon show. Ita- it's Italian. I didn't even know that. I only found it because I looked it up. Uh, <laughs> okay. Which is about like fairies. Um, what I can gather from the original cartoon is it's just about a, a girl who finds out she's a fairy. Right. So she goes to another world to a school called Alfia, where she meets some friends who have funny names. And um, they form the Winx Club, which is just like their friendship group. And they go and like save the universe and stuff. Oh, sounds good. have really nice outfits because it's Italian, so they have nice outfits. Um, Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> the Netflix show. <laughs> <laughs> tries to... Hands. Okay, so it essentially just tries to be this whole teen drama high school... But what? magic school, oh my goodness. It's, sort of like a, it's like a sixth form, isn't it? Cause it's, yeah. Everyone's got English accents apart from the main character. Who's American? Because you can't have an English main character. <laughs> Don't Not be allowed. silly. No. No. Um, it's a bit disconcerting when everyone's got British accents and then the school's really. It feels American to me. It's very American. It doesn't feel like a British college. Because yeah. Because there's no costume parties. It's like if Americans tried to do Harry Potter. Yeah. And make it modern and just yeah, it, no, nothing really works. That's what the feels like they're trying to do, isn't it? Mm. Hogwarts, and then they just forgot. Hogwarts sixth form. <laughs> Forgot us to do like world building and stuff. <laughs> to give people character arcs. But anyway, so there's going to be spoilers all over the place, yeah. so we're not going to worry about uh, that. Fine. So if you haven't seen the show and you really, really want to, then don't don't watch this. <laughs> don't watch the show. It's terrible. Yeah, but don't watch the show either. It is not great. No. Uh, let's go into that. Yeah. Then. So. so what? We start with our main character Bloom. Actually, no, we don't. No, we don't. We start with the shepherd. Getting ripped to shreds by this unknown creature so far. Called a well. It turns out they're called burned ones. The burned ones. Which sounds familiar. I don't think well, it's probably ghost or something. Yeah, um, we were just like you know burnt looking things. Which is quite a cool but, intro, I think, of having oh, this yeah, sort of it horror. It was a good intro. Hmm. It was quite tense. You know the shepherd's going to die, but I still like hoping he wouldn't because I don't like when people die. Well, yes, but uh, yeah. Um, you know. so it was good. And then then we have Bloom. And she turns up at the school and you know, the, the love interest goes to talk to her immediately because, you know... Of course he does. <laughs> it's a school. This uh, blonde, head, blonde head boy yeah. called Sky, and he's... Sky. Yeah. Who, I don't know, I can't remember what they talk about, nothing important. Yeah, nothing nothing important there. Yeah. Then she uh, talks to her dorm mates. Yeah, so she... Well, I think it was a dorm. The, the layout wasn't obvious, so I can't quite tell if it was a dorm or just... Yeah. Where they, I don't know, I don't know where they were in the school, but she seems to be closest locationally to these four other girls. Yeah. Um. So there's Stella, who's uh, who turns out second to be, year. Yeah, second year. She's sort of their monitor, isn't? Mentor. Mentor. Okay. A th- yeah, she's a light fairy. So they're mm. all fairies, and apparently fairies are elemental. Um, so she's a light fairy. She's like a sort of queen bee character. Not very nice, really. I, yeah. And then we have um, Aisha. Aisha, yeah. Aisha, so yeah. she's the water fairy. You can tell she's a water fairy because she's got blue bits in her hair and she goes swimming twice a day. <laughs> she had to be a water fairy. Of course. <laughs> but she's like athletic, straight A student, like perfect. Yeah, and then you have Terra. Terra, who is the plant girl because her name's Terra. Of course. Um... Yeah, so she's the she's the, also the token like fat girl. I feel mean saying that, but they do bring the it up. Token overweight bit. character. They do bring it yeah. up as a plot point. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's the thing. She, um, she was quite socially anxious and. But she had to. Un- well, not unaware, but. Out of the group, she was the best character and also she's, the best actor. She's the character I liked the most because she seemed genuinely nice and wanted to make friends. And she was actually genuinely quite yeah. a strong character in a lot of ways as yeah, well. She, yeah, she was powerful. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the last one is Musa, not not Mueller as I can yeah, call her. Musa. <laughs> Musley. Um, who's a mind fairy hmm. uh, who is like an empath. She sort of can feel emotions. 
Yeah. So she tries to not talk to people wearing headphones all the time, just to pretend she's not listening. Which is quite rude, actually. Yeah. Um, none of these cat. Only Terra is really nice. Yeah, the rest of them are they're, they're all kind of terrible a bit, people. Bit mean to each other, really. <laughs> I don't quite know why they're meant to be friends. They don't. They're not. Aisha's okay, actually. To be fair. Yeah, it Aisha's was a rocky okay. Beginning, but she was fine, really. She was all right. Um, but anyway, we meet these yeah. characters. And then we cut to... Oh, it was the fighting class, isn't it? Well, before that, we uh, she has a chat with the head teacher. Oh, yeah. Who sort of talks about, okay, she needs to control her powers, and we find out she's a fire fairy. Ooh. Bloom, she's got red the main hair. character, by the way. <laughs> and she's she's very much suffers from main characteritis of not really having I'm any character. I'm just too powerful, and I can't control oh, no, it. no, I'm too powerful. What <laughs> am I going to do? Except for times I can control it perfectly. <laughs> Except for then, but, oh, no, I'm too powerful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, I forgot about that chat. So we find out that mysterious, oh, why is she there? She needs to control her powers. What happens? I mean, it's not much mysterious why she's there. She's there because she's got magic. Well, yeah, but... And Earth don't have no magic, so she's got to go to this... Yeah. So they talk about, like, it's it's another world... There are seven realms apparently in the world, but I don't know what those are because they don't bother telling you anything. We only really mention it and we never really see any of that. Yeah, um, It's really only set at the school and one or two other locations. There's the forest in the sort of outside the barrier. There's mm. Bloom's family Bloom's home, family, which you only yeah. see like three times. times. Yeah. In flashback and then a couple of times otherwise. Uh, and then there's the other place, but we'll get to that. Yeah. Um... Oh, uh, yeah. Then we have a training sequence. Yes. Where, so, so in the school, you've not only got the fairies, but you also have these people who are being trained up essentially as soldiers. It's it's very much a sort of military school, isn't it? Yeah. Still learning apart from how to use magic and then how to fight peeps. Yeah. Um, it's uh, mm. so so we find this out later, but oftentimes one of the military people is sort of teamed up with a fairy, and that's sort of how they defeat. At least in terms of the burned ones. I guess. I don't really go too much to how to defeat them. I never really got, like, how to kill them. Because the guy, like, stabbed one and it wasn't dead. Yeah. And they had to, like, burn it up with, like, internal fire or something. I don't know. But either way, we, we go into that later. <laughs> it, after we discover... Okay, so there's this training sequence with... Yeah. Um, Sky, Sky, who's the main, <laughs> the main love interest. <laughs> the friend, we don't know his name. <laughs> yeah, we've completely forgotten his name. So uh, you've called him. I've called him Smoke Boy, but I might want to smoke you. And I've called him Weed Boy <laughs> because all he seems to do is talk about how much he's uh, how high you got over the how weekend. high you got over the summer and <laughs> he seems to be smoking all the time as well. Like oh, because he went to the office looking for the vape, didn't he? Hmm. Yeah. And that's why I called him Smoke Boy because I said him with a vape. And we um. all, <laughs> and we also meet Silver. Who he's is one of the head guy. teachers? He's the he's the head training dude. That's all you need to know. Yeah. At the minute, uh, anyway, then the faculty discover the dead shepherd. The dead shepherd, and oh no, there's burned one. Oh, there is a burned one around. Shock horror. Oh no. So they want to go and like fight you and stuff. There is the party, the freshers' party, the first party. Hooray. Uh, which is not a freshers' party because freshers' parties are always you know costume parties. I remember. Mine, it was nerds or jocks, I think. <laughs> so I went as a nerd, obviously. I didn't go to the freshest party because I don't like parties, but you know. No, I, I don't look think great. I did. Bright red glasses on and like freckles and. Oh, amazing. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, they they had a party and there wasn't particularly anything interesting going on in I that. I didn't have written anything down about that party. Just party no. number one. Oh, and there's Be- we meet Beatrix, who is an air fairy. Um, which apparently just means you can have electric spark around your fingers as you do non-air related things. Fair enough. <laughs> Don't quite get what air magic well, is. That... So she's an electricity fairy essentially because yeah, she does nothing. It air-related. looks cooler than like just <laughs> <a> wind. <laughs> um, and she like obviously evil. Yeah, she's she she tells the headmistress that she's obsessed with the school and she's mm. obsessed with her and her past. And she keeps smirking evilly. And yeah. She wears like dark gothic cool clothes so obviously she's evil so yeah she, she's clearly exaggerated posh accent she's clearly evil very yeah so she's obviously not a nice person um which is weird because we thought the headmistress was evil at the beginning because there was evil music playing over her yeah and, and then she wasn't it was really weird it's, yeah I don't know what that was about it's like a pantomime because <laughs> <laughs> it got the wrong music cue <laughs> um bloom flashbacks to her parents 
so she kind of remembers like when she like learned magic or mm. when she had magic because like her parents sucked. Yeah. Her parents are nice. Apart from the one time um, her mum took away her bedroom door because I think she slammed it in her face. So. They've both been quite mean to each other, okay? It was a te- pretty, pretty bad argument. They've both been very horrible, but I don't think they much took the door. That mm. was just that's abusive. That's not good. Don't take away your kids' doors. Um, and Bloom got upset and I'm um, like, burnt down the house. And then we sort of cut Oops. back to Bloom trying to trying to practice her magic outside, but she becomes too powerful and Aisha comes to the rescue mm. because water and fire. So yeah. Aisha quenches... Her yeah, quench, no. <laughs> Quells the fire, whatever the word is. Yeah, puts it out. Yeah. Extinguishes it. Extinguishes the fire. <laughs> and then uh, Aisha and Bloom have this heart-to-heart. Yeah, they talk about stuff. And then Aisha thinks that Bloom is a changeling because humans can't have magic and she's too powerful. Well, she's a fairy and she's a fairy a fair. isn't really a human, apparently. Yeah. She was told that it was probably just latent... Latent? dormant fairy blood in her and it's just come alive in her but actually she's a changing because she's too powerful for mm. it to be um dormant magic um so yeah ch- changelings in folklore if people aren't aware is a uh, when a fairy baby is swapped with a human baby um at birth so and yeah so mystery Ooh. main character mystery oh, no. yeah so uh. everyone looks down on changing for some reason i don't know why yeah, that's that's never really explained or uh, like... gone into anymore. <laughs> Apparently, people don't like changelings, yeah. even don't, though they're just fairies. Case, I feel like it's the whole kind of when you make fun of the adopted kid, which is just a evil and horrible, hmm. and b kind of pointless. Like only idiots do that. Most people don't care. So it's weird that everyone seems to be getting up about it. But anyway, then um... we have Stella gives oh, yeah. Bloom this gateway ring which she can be transported to where she wants to go and Bloom gets homesick so she she goes home, she goes home. Uh, she phones home just outside home because <laughs> yeah, she's got to watch the parent after the phone like a creep because uh, that's you know well, she's she... meant to be in the Alps <laughs> so yeah, yeah. people are like why are you here you should be on the side of the world but either way that's a generic trope isn't it they, yeah. they ring when they're outside and the parents convince them so they go back yeah. so well, that she couldn't have stayed there because she had to sell his ring she yeah. had to go back to get back Yeah, eventually. she had to go back. But anyway, she wanted to visit home because she was homesick. And... The burned one attacks her, doesn't it? Then uh, then a burnt one attacks yeah. her when she goes back. Well, it's when she's trying to... She's starting to travel back, uh, kind of. Um, yeah. Fortunately, the headmistress, Mrs. Dorling Far- Farrad... Farrah, Dor- we'll just call her Farrah. Or... Yeah. Farrah yeah. um, saves her and chains the burned one up. Hmm. But she does lose the ring... The bird one seems to absorb it or something. Yeah. So she's lost that as ring. Oops. And that's pretty much what the first episode ends, isn't it? Well, the it ends with Beatrix oh. being evil again, and uh, so um, Farrah, um, ch- Farrah chained up the bird one in this shack just outside yeah. the school grounds, and then Beatrice comes in and awakens it. Oh no! End of episode. Oh, she's evil. Um, <sighs> so yeah, the first episode uh, try and lay a lot of groundwork, I guess try to i mean a lot of stuff happens but a lot of it is very uninteresting party yeah. and character related there's a stuff lot of parties and relationship stuff which is just that like there's a character we haven't even mentioned because he's just not a very interesting character that? oh dane dane i think it was dane yeah the one that um oh yeah. Wee's well, boy is bullying he, he comes up a little bit yeah he, but yeah, either way not, not important character we won't go into him <laughs> um okay so in episode two we finally get a magic lesson it's like, oh, yes, some nice magic, except it's kind of rubbish because they go to this stone circle where there's a vessel. The stone circle seems to be a way of drawing on the land, the magic of the land. So I suppose it's for like first years to actually be able to reach the power. Mm. Um, and they'll take it in turns to go up to the vessel and try and make magic, bring, make an element appear in it or something. And mm. that's where you kind of learn that, oh, there's air fairies and, and mind fairies. And you get a little bit of what they do, but not very much. They also don't mention light fairies at all. Yeah. I, I, I only guess that's what Stella is, because she can make light appear. Um, <laughs> so it's also a bit lame, because it, it seems very focused on being elemental. And yet they all seem to also be doing other random magics, which aren't explained. Especially the head teacher. You see, often she, like, she can do pretty stuff. much anything the plot requires her to do. But it's all not elemental, so I don't understand what what's going on there. The magic system is really unexplained, so I don't get any of it. We, we'll might it's go into that later. It's trying to be hard, and then it's just terrible. Yeah. Um, 
Uh, oh, and then Bloom can't do it because <laughs> plot, I guess. Because she could do it earlier in the film, but can't mm. do it now. But anyway, so um, the I believe is it the burn one that escapes. Yeah. Yeah. So the burn burn one manages to escape, and the troops and Silver get sent out um, to try and try and track the uh, the the burned yeah, one. Yeah, except they don't have a very fun time, do they? They don't. Mm. But we find out that a bit later. Uh, Musa meets Sam, who's Terry's brother. So there's that romance. Oh yeah, that's again not very important. Well, it's a thing, I yeah. guess. That's a romance. Um, uh, then then the whole team Winks try to. Um, well, Bloom well, and Team Winks have to try and get the ring because Stella's mm. getting grumpy at them. They never call it Team Winks. No. The, the Winks, when it comes up, because when they're, like, texting each other, because they, like, text each other and stuff, it comes up on the screen, mm. you know, like, they've like, Sherlock or something, isn't it? They do that. Um, and the group chat is called Winks. It is what it is. We don't know where they get the name. It's, it's, <laughs> no, it's just, what they're called. Winks. Um, but we'll call them Team Winks because it's usually those, those five. Yeah. Um... Anyway, so they they go and look for the ring. Oh, yeah. Stella and... Is it just Stella and Bloom or is it... Uh... Stella, Aisha and Bloom hmm. go and then Terra, Musa and... No, Terra, Musa. Just those two. Um, turn up to help. Yeah. So they find the burned one. They also find all the armies dead. Yeah, they find some dead Silver soldiers. Apart from because he's a named character and can't die. Yeah. Y- yes. Yet. Mm. Maybe we don't know what happens. Um, and he's been scratched. So the burned ones, um, they're like super dangerous and stuff, and they will kill you and rip you up and stuff. Hmm. But if you just get hit, like scratched or something, it causes an infection, which will kill you eventually. And the only way to not die from it is for the the burned one that infected you to be killed. Hmm. So um. Uh, Silver gets taken back to the school, I suppose. Yeah, well, well, a burned one attacks the yeah. team, and and I, I guess, well, who who's was it the head teacher that saved them? Yeah, I think it was. Yeah, because no, no, it no. wasn't because they managed to get the ring from. Oh, there's so many instances of love burn one attacking them. I get more mixed up. Yeah, so. Oh no. yeah, no, the second one. Hang on, we're in the. Th- I've written they go and they get her ring back. They get the ring back, yeah. But I recall her getting the ring back and, like, plucking it out of her. Yeah. Either way, they get the ring back. Yeah, That's everyone's, it. like, all the army's dead, so... Meanwhile, Beatrix is trying to get into this secret door in, uh, in, uh, door Farrah's, Farrah's office. office. Um, it's behind her bookcase, which is a great place for a secret door. I mean, it's the most um, obvious place, but... Oh, and is that... Yeah. Um... It's also kind of where you meet Dane and he forms a friendship with Terra, background relationship stuff. Not important. Um, and then... I think they realise there's more than one burned one because don't they kill one except... Yeah. Silver doesn't isn't cured so they think, oh, there's more than one. Or that one wasn't worrying. dead. Well, the, or there was oh, several of they're them. They're just getting attacked by burned ones and like, I get all mixed up but what actually happened? Yeah. At one point she attacked it and she pulled the ring out but it wasn't dead. At another point, they were fighting it. Oh, they go and attack it and get the ring back, so it's not dead. Yeah. And then later, she and Sky are out faffing because she, uh, Bloom has his habit of going to Stone Circle to mope. And he goes and talks to her, and then they get attacked. And then that's when, that's when Stella Faris... comes up and says, Close your eyes! And, like, she's <laughs> trying to light it. And then um, Farrah saves them and all then in the end. Because they think it's dead, and Musa's like, I don't think it's... And then it wakes up. Um, and, and then the head teacher gets him. Yay! Just explodes it from the inside. But anyway, that's that's later on. No, it wasn't dead. But the, well, that was this episode. No, that was... Was it not? That was the next episode or something, I think. Oh, I'm getting so mixed up. But either way, yes, because it, this episode ends on Bloom having this memory of someone called Rosalind. And she says to come and find her. Yeah. And we don't know what that means. Mystery for the main character. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And then we get... Oh, yeah, this one is. Then the next episode cuts to a seconds lesson, I think. One of only two lessons they have in the entire series. None of the lessons, by the way, are split up by, like, element. Which seems weird to me, because you're all given tasks that are specific to the element, and yet they, they obviously didn't have, like, a fire fairy teacher, and then it 
but then our fairy teacher. Then our main characters couldn't be in oh, more than oh, one scene away from each other. Oh no. Um, which is a bit. It's almost like maybe you should um have some other lessons that are more generic, and then have like specific elemental lessons. What else they learn in school apart from magic? Do they learn anything else? Apparently not. It's uh, <laughs> the easiest school you only have one subject. It's not even like the the magic split into different subjects like like a Hogwarts. It's just mm. oh, learn to control your magic and that's it. Also, they just teach us specifically go really slowly, and then they all like do loads of really cool magic. You know, like the first few episodes. And they all that's yeah. The, by the end of the guy. series, by the end of the series, they all yeah m- yeah do, do they're all stuff. great at their magic, and there there isn't really any problems. Yeah. Anyway, the second lesson is you know I don't know. Aisha suddenly sucks because uh, I guess they attempt to do a character arc and then just kind of forgot to do anything with it. Mm. Um, so Bloom can control her magic in that episode because she's able to burn just the one piece of kindling, but Aisha can't separate a droplet from the water. Or something. I mean, she did all right and then yeah, it fell apart. She, yeah, but she did all right. But uh, then... Yeah, there's a second party, isn't there? And then we got got uh, people trying to track the burned one because um, yeah. Silver's going to be... Dying because yeah. of the whole burned one That's situation. It. That's it. Because uh, I don't know if we mentioned if a burned one scratches or attacks yeah, you, and I just said that. you've said that, have you? Yeah. yeah. So you, you slowly die. I think it depends how like badly it got you as well. Hmm. How quickly the infection can kill you. So yeah, that, there's a whole team tracking them, and that happens a lot again. And it's all in the forest, so all of those scenes merge together. Yeah, that's why I got so confused because it's just like this nondescript forest. Yeah. Uh, then there's another party, and that's all not very interesting. It's all relationship stuff, isn't relationship. it? Relationship. Like, oh, oh Dane is an idiot, and Terra gets upset. Oh, and, no. Uh, Sky and Stella, who used to date, and like... Not, yeah. not very interesting. Relationship was so flat, because the characters are dull. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then Beatrix kills um, yeah. the secretary by pushing him into the trap and then getting rid of evidence of his body. So, so the secret door in Dorling's yeah. office is uh, protected with this weird wall of magic. And she can't work out how to like undo the trap, so she just pushes Callum, who's a secretary, who's apparently on her side, into it, which makes him lips go blue and he sort of, like look and cold, hmm. which apparently disarms the trap so she could just walk through, which seems like a really bad trap to That's me. That's an awful trap. Like, at least make it work for more than one pe- yeah. person. Yeah, oh gosh, what was your plan of, like, more than one person to get in at once? So Beatrix <laughs> has finally made it through. Except, ah, oh, she's foiled because there's this wall of light and she doesn't know what to do with it. She has no idea. Darn it. Um, so she goes out again. Then she, like, murders Callum. Yeah. Is that now? Yeah, she yeah. She, she murders she Callum. She him by uh... disintegrating him like she thanos him. Yeah, which apparently you can do with air magic. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I don't get what air magic does. It just does everything. And then uh, mm. I've got a note here. Rosalind is apparently dead, according to Farah. I've written the same thing except I put a sad face in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so we we find this information oh, out. Yeah, because Bloom is hunting for information about trying because she's the face with the memory of Rosalind telling her to find her. So she eventually finds Rosalind in some old books, like old school books. And finds out her name's Rosalind. And then she goes talks to the headmistress who says that she's dead, so don't bother. So that she's trying to find out, like, about her past and why she got placed in the human world as a baby and stuff. Um, and then... Oh, and then and then she goes out to mope. And then Sky comes to talk to her. And then the Berman attacks. And then Stella saves them with the light blast. Yeah. And then Farrah... And then Farrah kills her. it. it and, th- and then they're alive. So that's how that went. And boom, end of episode. Oh, jeez. That's not. That's only number three. We've got. We've got three more There's to get six, through. Only six. That's right. <laughs> Are they kind of lesson has happened as you go through. Yeah, until the like the last episode, and even that's even not very then, interesting. Most of it was just like, whatever. Then the queen visits. Oh, this, this is this is Queen Luna, by the way, who happens to be Stella's mum. Stella's mum. She's a princess. Um. So Queen Luna is the queen of Solaria, which I think is where Althea, Althea is. She comes to give an assembly about, like, burned ones. Unfortunately, we don't get to hear any of it because um, we said decided to focus on the people talking during the assembly and then people who have snuck out, which is annoying because I was like, I wanted to know what these burned ones are and hmm. stuff. But that's fine. <laughs> don't tell us anything. That's no. cool. <laughs> uh, so, in actual facts, this assembly is to try and root out <gasps> Callum's killer, the secretary's <laughs> killer. So, yeah, they're trying to root out who's at not, not in the there. assembly. And those people happen to be Bloom and Beatrix, and they're on their own little road trip to try and find out. So they they sneak into like a room, don't they? Yeah. And they find a war room. 
Which is never really brought up again. Yeah, I don't quite know what the point that was. Yeah. Um, I think it was so that they could split off from Sky and Smokey because they went with them and then they sold it off. Hmm. So then they go on a road trip to this place, which whose name I can't remember. Some something beginning with A. It's another yeah. thing beginning with A. I'll just call it the city because I don't. I think it's like a village anyway. Yeah, something. village or a town. The uh, old place. And we find out that both Bloom and Beer, apparent uh, Beatrix, <laughs> Beer, Beer, I know. Uh, Bloom and Bee came from this place, and we find out that the faculty members. So that is, Dorling Silver. And, and Terry's dad, who's like the herbology teacher. Yeah, he's <laughs> Professor Sprout. <laughs> he's Professor Sprout. Equivalent. Uh, <laughs> they find out they actually combined all their magic and destroyed Because the burned town. ones had infiltrated it, so just thought, ah, oh, yeah, screw all the people, let's just murder everyone. So, yeah, that's that's what oh, we think no. happened. So, Bloom was all like, oh, no, the, the person who's going to teach me how to use magic must be evil, and you, who are clearly evil, must be telling the truth. And then they, when they, when they're coming back to the school, um, all of the the faculty capture Beatrix, and then look her up, and that's pretty much um, all that happens in episode four. Yeah, it's actually quite simple because it's often. Oh, and then when the queen goes back home, she like takes Stella back with she's, her. Yeah. She's upset that Stella hasn't learned to control her magic yet. Even though, yeah, they haven't really started. <laughs> like, lady, don't take her out of school then. <laughs> it is what it is. Um. Fifth one. Oh, so Bloom wants to free Beatrix because she wants to find out. She thinks she's the only way of finding out like what happens. Yeah, she's trying to get answers. She she's very skeptical of Beatrix, which is good. Yeah. But she's also skeptical of the faculty, which is fine. Yeah, be skeptical. That's cool. But yeah. Um. But she does decide instead of just hey Beatrix, you say that Rosalind's still alive. Tell me where she is. She's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll try and bust you out then, so you can show me. Like, just tell me what <laughs> I'll go find myself. Beatrix gives out this disc thing. I don't know what it is. Some sort of magic battery. Which needs to, to be charged up in the stone circle. To uh, to free Beatrix. So she goes off to the stone circle to charge it up. She also drugs Sky. Yeah, there's she this... She him and drugs him. There's this whole romantic uh, scene with Sky, but she also yeah. drugs him so that he doesn't stop her from doing what she's about to do, which is the free The drug just makes Beatrix. him, like, fall asleep. Yeah, he's... Uh... Way, it's just a sleeping drug. Um, uh, and the uh, friends cause... all find out, don't they? Well, oh. well, yeah. The whole the whole point of this is Beatrix is saying, "Well, if you free me, I can bring you to Rosalind's because she's actually alive." Yeah, and and that's where you can get answers from. So um, mm. that's that's the only reason Bloom is trying to free Beatrix because she doesn't trust her, but she does want answers. Mm. So then the the friends find out yeah. and they take the magic disc so she can't go and free Beatrix because they're like but Beatrix like murks that guy so don't trust her <laughs> she's, she's clearly evil, evil. <laughs> <laughs> she, she she talks to Farrah at some point isn't she because then Farrah gives her side of the story yeah her and sister, isn't it and Farrah sort of says oh we didn't actually know that the 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 town the old town that they destroyed had people in it, uh, and they said Rosalind actually told us that the town was completely empty and yeah, it was only burned ones. It. So they they destroyed all the people, and then only when they down afterwards, they realised that actually no, the people were still there and they would murked them all, which is why Rosalind got locked up. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then we get the return of Stella, Stella, who's invisible because she's like magic and stuff. She somehow he, learnt to do um, yeah, become invisible. It's just just like you know appearing. She just does break potted plants when she's annoyed, <laughs> like a <Yes>. ghost. <laughs> it's pretty random. Um, so she, so the girls are all uh, arguing about like what they ought to do, and Stella's like, I don't think you should take away her chance to uh, find out who she really is. She needs answers. Therefore, let's trust the murderer, uh, so- and trust the person who. Rosalind, who clearly is evil, because mm. you know she she didn't tell any of the faculty that they yeah. were they were destroying a town that I don't is quite full know why they gave it made it a secret. They should have <sighs> been like, yeah, Rosalind's a war criminal because she murders people. Yeah, they they should have just said that. But oh, yeah, whatever. But uh, that's another thing that doesn't make sense. Yeah, but we need the miscommunication and the secrets to drive the plot. So they free Beatrix and um. Yeah. Oh, and then they they go down to, under the tunnels to go find Rosalind. Because apparently um, they haven't reinstalled security. Oh no, they they did put the trap back in, but then yes. they chucked. They, they chucked Beatrix. Beatrix. <laughs> so she was like, "Oh, cold." 
That's quite funny. That was pretty satisfying, actually. <laughs> yeah, I like that bit. Uh, yeah. um, except, are you sure? The traitor tattles. She tells Farrah what they're going to do, and Farrah rushes to stop them. Which is the most sensible but it's thing. too late. Oh. Oh no, she's freed Rosalind and they Well, this is, this is the beginning of the sixth episode. Oh, now. well, it pretty much ends with them freeing her, doesn't it? Yeah, so... Um, um, so sixth episode. Bloom frees Rosalind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Farrah's annoyed. Um, the burned ones are of a mast outside. Um, there's a ton of them. There's like, there's like six, that's so many. Um, and they're well, all really worried about it mm. because they sent off some other units to track down another one except they all died. There was a horrible video call, wasn't there, with the yeah. Norl or whatever her name was and getting murdered. I was like, oh. Yeah, with a, with a with a only just named character so so mm-hmm. that she can die off screen. Yeah, but the guy who was phoning her looked so sad. Yeah. So, um, so mm-hmm. they find out the burned ones are coming to the school and it happens that they're coming for Bloom, which we, yeah. we only just found out. Because she's special. Because she's the she's chosen the, one. Just, they just said chosen one, but they do say special, so... <laughs> I don't know why she's so special. She's the special. <laughs> she's the special. Hang on. <laughs> um, uh, so Rosalind teaches Bloom some magic stuff, except it's all very generic. It's all very they, generic and vague. They go it's to just... the stone circle, and she's just like, "Oh, you got to reach deeper to, to do," and that apparently deep into yourself works. Um, she gives the most palpatine speech oh, you've man. ever heard in your life. Reach yeah, into except... yourself, you know it to be true. I yes. am. Use the power of the dark side. I am the scent. <laughs> That's what it sounds like, anyway. Not the voice. <laughs> anyway, uh, it turns out that um, Rosalind tells oh, yeah. Bloom that she's charging up her magic, but it turns out she's actually lowering the barrier. Before that, does she not explain her side of events oh, gosh, at the destruction yeah. of the city? You see, apparently, the, the city was not of people, it was of blood witches. Which is people who use death and sacrifice to use magic. Um, and she was looking for an excuse to, like, murder Get them Get rid of them, yeah. Um, so when the bomb was attacked, she was like, Great! Two birds, one stone. Let's, let's kill them all. One, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> she, she, she this does gets that. mentioned, other characters are like, Oh, fair enough. Like, yeah. Blood witches, okay, genocide. <laughs> they all hate blood witches. Uh, <laughs> that's cool. Let's kill them all. I don't know what blood witches are. They're just as death and sacrifice. Yeah, we, I don't we, know if that's sacrifice of people or of like animals or of just like acorns. I don't know. Well, this goes to the horrible world building. We know nothing about any of this. Yeah, so I don't know. We're how just bad told that is. we're just told they're terrible and that's but it. Bloom seems to have been a fairy that was kidnapped by the blood witches mm. because she's special, um, and so her parents, her real fairy parents, might still be alive somewhere. Oh no, that's that'll um, be for another season. We'll yeah. uh, we'll worry about that. So the school is. Under sort of siege by the by the burned ones. So as you were saying, Rosalind was Rosalind was lowering skinned. the barrier by yeah. using the the stone circle powers the school's barrier and electricity because of reasons. Oh, we'll go we'll go Don't into electricity work, later. Yeah. Uh, so all the lights are flickering. The barrier goes down. Oh, oh! We also find out that we have a flashback to the day that they destroyed the town, and oh. we find out that Silver. Got, got into an argument with um, Sky's, Sky's dad, who I, I've got his name Andrea. somewhere. Andrea. Andrea, yeah. Or some place. Some, Arimathea. <laughs> so, so, I don't Arimathea. know. No, that's, 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 <laughs> the Bible. that's biblical, isn't it? Uh, never <laughs> Joseph mind. Joseph Arimathea. Yeah, so. <laughs> well, be a Andreas of Arimathea. Uh, and it, they, they get into a fight and Silver kills Sky's dad in self-defence because he wanted... Sky wanted... Not Sky. Silver wanted to tell... Them that it because Silver had found out it was still populated. It's still populated. Andrea was like, "No, let them die. They're blood witches. Genocide. It's the only way." So, so um, we think that Sky's dad is uh, died. Yeah. Um. Then, the, all the students are uh, all gathered. Oh yeah, Terra's dad gets really upset that that they helped Bloom free Rosalind, so that he locks her in the room. Them all in the room, except then the brother Sam, because he could like walk through walls. Because <laughs> earth magic, I guess. And gets attacked by a burned one that's infiltrated the school. Goes back into the room and then they can't obviously get him to help because they're locked in the room. Yeah. Well done, nice Mr. One, Mr. Sprout. <laughs> done well there. That's what Professor Sprout. Um, all the students get brought to the courtyard, which isn't much of a courtyard. It's just a room. Um, hmm. 
and kind of wait for the Bourbons to attack. And not not much happens in there really. No, uh, some various I would romantic ex- drama. I would expect the head teacher to be fighting, but no, she's just there. Mm. Well, they seem to be kind of waiting for the Bourbons to come to them. Yeah. Tara wants to fight. She starts taking down the barricades. Mm. Um, while her brother's like dying. Um, then the Bourbons do inf- do attack. But as soon as they break in, uh, oh, the head teacher kind of looks at it, goes, <gasps> and then it, and then she doesn't kill it for some reason. It takes like two seconds to kill them. Like, yeah. With the right magic, they just go, <laughs> dead. But, um, but no, it, it doesn't It happen. runs off again immediately. Which I think is weird, but it's because Bloom realises they're after her. So she, Stella and Aisha. Yeah, they all run they off. They all run away to draw them away from the school. Then, um... Uh, well, Stella and Aisha are kind of like, we'll be here if you need help because uh, I can make a f- pool of water to protect you from your own fire if you get out of control and they disappear because it, 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 like powers. They're never needed, like, don't worry, they'll come up. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and then Bloom goes all Super Saiyan oh, and anime protagonist. Magical princess transformation scene. Yeah. <laughs> There's like pop music and everything. Oh my goodness, and it's she, terrible. She, her, she puts her arms out and the flames really bad. <laughs> Effect flames yeah. up her arms. All the flames are really red, by the way. It just looks well, so fake. Her hands are quite orange, look more real, and the upper arms on her sort of maroon jacket. Yeah, <laughs> and then fake red flames are really. Weird. And then she, and then she gets wings. Oh, she gets her um, fire wings. Fiery and wings. then the burn ones are all attacking, and she's just like. She blasts um... some. <laughs> oh man, that must be really fun shooting that scene. She just stands there going. Oh, it's oh my goodness. And she kills all of them. Hooray. And then we're the dead. day is saved, yay. Like she wasn't needed. No. Um, and then the Farrah comes and she's like, oh, wow, that was so amazing. There's a, there's a line or two about how the burned ones have been transformed into like just people, like dead people. Well, but t- you don't it, get much of a look at them, and it's never really explained. I'm, I'm assuming burned ones used to be people, and then through through the adventure at the end, don't they? Yeah. But like, I was kind of no, I didn't get to like see clearly that they were people because it was just like it was just bodies. The, the cinematography was kind of rubbish in this. Yeah, I mean, it was, focus on things where I would have wanted to focus on things. It, it was fine, but it, no, it was serviceable, inspired. but it wasn't. It wasn't um, great. All of the dialogue scenes are just back and forwards, just one camera, second yes. camera, one camera, second camera. It's it's pretty I didn't boring. I noticed that, but I'm sure you did. Um, so they um, save the day. Yeah. Sam doesn't die. Bloom decides to go home to visit her parents to reveal that she's actually a changeling and not actually their real daughter. And then, yeah, they reconcile. And all her friends come over for a sleepover. Um, and this very un- uh, unearned sort of scene with music oh, behind yeah, it's it. Nice, it's quite a nice song, to be fair. It's all very emotional. Um, like, oh, I'm looking um, at a photo album and going, oh, I'm crying. And you just don't really care. <laughs> like, it's, it's not interesting. Okay. Nice song. What the song is? <laughs> um, and then they go back to school. Oh, except... Rosalind has taken over. <gasps> She's had Silver arrested for the attempted murder of Andrea. Well, that was Queen Luna, Queen, who's in well, in on the coup. Queen Luna is yeah. coming as she, yeah, they're working together. Yeah, because Andrea is not dead. Oh no, he... Andreas, yeah, Andreas, Andrea, <laughs> Andrea, Andrea, <laughs> Andrea. <laughs> and- Andy, Andreas, who is who presumably yeah. will come into other seasons but he's gonna be like, does, does nothing in this he season. was like beatrix's like person who raised beatrix oh she's fine as well um yeah, dane saves her because he's an idiot yeah she's you know who made me feel like being different was cool <laughs> why she was terrible um and then just before um, the ends rosalind kills farah oh, a head yeah, teacher she gets to take over the school well, she explains a little bit she's like oh because there's a war coming and more Burned ones, and, and there things were once that are worse people, and everything's gonna be ones. terrible. Anyway, bye, you're dead. <laughs> yeah, she explains all this, and then she kills her in true bad guy fashion. Okay, you know, I don't. If you're concerned about this war that you're gonna have to fight in to defeat the other people, don't kill someone who's quite useful. Don't kill someone very pa- clearly powerful. Yeah, I don't. I don't get get what her aim is. Yeah, but anyway, that's sort ends. of the whole just series summed up there's a lot oh. of bits that are in there that we didn't cover because it's not it's very most interesting relationship stuff yeah. i just didn't care it's not interesting um, yeah so it was pretty stupid the pacing of it is it's a bit odd it was very well i call it end heavy mm. because a lot of the important you weren't told information until it was needed and obviously it was all needed at the end so so you it only felt really get a it. little bit like well, the first few episodes were kind of pointless, apart from like, oh, it's just cool. The only really important things happen in the last two episodes, really. 
Yeah. Because you have all the stuff with Rosalind and... Uh, yeah. yeah. Some of the build-ups, fine, like Beatrix f- trying to free Rosalind. You get that I a little bit. I didn't mind... I didn't like Beatrix. No. But I didn't mind her as a character and what she was doing because she, at least she seemed to have a purpose and a goal and was yeah, those making scene, efforts to fulfil it. Those scenes actually brought the story mm. forward, whereas yeah. a lot of the teen drama stuff just wasn't just doing anything. I don't quite know what was there. We could have done without um, it. Yeah. So the characters... Oh, gosh. Are terrible. Yeah. Uh so, I mean, Bloom was just boring main characteritis. Really badly acted. Very, very bland character. Oh, yeah, I just couldn't tell anything about her. Um, yeah, whenever whenever she wasn't talking, she just pulled this face. It was... It, yeah. Needless to say, she can't act. In fact, the two best actors, I think, was the actor... Terror. For paying terror. She was quite good. She was pretty good. She did. She had a per- pretty terrible script, but she did her best with it. Yeah. Um. And Farrah. Farrah, she was quite good. But then she gets killed off at the end, so we're not going to see her again. Oh. Um. Even Rosalind was just so. I don't know. Oh no, Rosalind couldn't. Almost half her lines sounded like just first reads of a script. Mm. They were just so. <laughs> You get that a little bit, a little bit with a couple of the other characters as well. Uh, yeah, well, you're blooming that Dane with his. Oh, Dane. <laughs> you're making a mess of that, or the weed you're going here. It, yeah, <laughs> horrible great, lines of delivery. Great read, kid. <laughs> but in terms of characters, none of them were consistent, and mm. none of their relationships with each other were consistent either. Yeah, that was my main problem. Mm. They, they didn't do things or act because of. The character they were they did things because the script needed them to either be friendly or hostile an idiot or skeptical you know it was... so for example in episode five when because they keep on going backwards and forwards yeah, on whether or not yeah. bloom should um let rosalind or go down to help beatrix, help to beatrix. Free rosalind. and they just go back and forth and it's only there because the script demanded it because it doesn't make any sense for any of the characters to do what they did. Yeah, because at that point, I think pretty much all the characters knew that Beatrix had murdered a guy. Um, Farah had, yes, decimated a village, but it wasn't on her orders. It was on Rosalind who was in charge. And B, she was working on the assumption that all the people had been evacuated. So we, Rosalind, so... however, seemed to be fully aware that no one had been evacu- evacuated. So why in hell would you think it was a cool idea to free the murderer to then free the mass murderer? Oh, goodness knows. <laughs> I don't quite... Just because Bloom wanted to find out where she was from. Well... And, yeah. D- 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 sucks. I'm sorry. Sucks to be you, but I think not letting murderers come out is more important. And all with Stella as well, like... Well, they wanted her to be like, the you know, a queen bee. Mm. But they also wanted her to be like friends with the group. Except they never establish her actually being nice to the group. No, she was never nice. So when she left, Tara was all like, oh, I know she was mean and horrible, but the leaving without saying goodbye was the meanest thing she did. And we were just thinking, no. no. It was the nice thing she did. That's, that's great. We didn't she, want to see her again. Her. She, she was, was terrible. Uh, but uh, I mean, to be honest, a lot of the, the Winx Club were kind of introduced in not a great way and then were just suddenly friends. Despite yeah. Despite not being earned. Like, Aisha, Aisha seemed a bit mean to... Like, Aisha and Bloom just didn't seem to get along, and then all of a sudden, mm. oh, they're having this heart-to-heart. It's a little like, bit, mm, yeah. Okay. Um, and, like, M- Musa was not particularly nice to Terra, because she's got these headphones, she was ignoring her, pretending like she couldn't hear her and stuff. And Terra was obviously a bit hurt by it. Mm. Um, but, like... They, they never show <laughs> any redeeming qualities or no. any redeeming scenes to any of this, so... On Stella's return, we're expected to believe that they're all suddenly friends now, and they, they're just they're not. not. Miss Stella had the tragic backstory. Oh, she accidentally blinded her best friend. Oh, oh no. uh, okay. They did this with about three characters with a tragic backstory in an attempt to try and make them seem like better people, but they're or not. interesting people. Or interesting. You can't... <laughs> but no, they're not. <laughs> you can't replace interesting character with a tragic backstory. It's not the same thing. <laughs> so, yeah, they did that. Give them, like, goals or hobbies or something that isn't just like, I like swimming because I'm a water fairy. Yeah, and it's just... 
<laughs> um, give them stuff to do together yeah. outside of plot, like major plot details as well. Yeah, um, they just need to act like characters rather than just listen to. The biggest one, which is such a small minor thing, but the one that upset me the most, I think, is most indicative of the problem, is <laughs> Bloom's mum. So Bloom's parents are seen as really nice people for most of the series. They're always painting nice, like apart from one scene, one flashback where they took away the door. Yes. And that scene, I watched it and I thought oh, her parents are obviously like really manipulative and abusive and they're, oh, they probably go through like being horrible and then love bombing to get her to not, you know. But, but no. But they're not really nice apart from that one thing. And I was like, no, I don't care how bad Dragon was. No normal parent does that. She only did that terrible thing to her daughter so that Bloom would be upset enough to use her powers accidentally. Yeah, and uh, again, just for the plots, that is the only reason that happened. <laughs> like, no, Bloom, call CPS or the NSPCC or someone. <laughs> That's, I think, illegal. Yeah, least. so so characters, not oh, well done not at all. Consistent. Let's talk about the magic system now oh and how it gosh. interacts with the school and yeah. all of that. Yeah, I so. mean, it all, it all comes into the world building as well, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, you don't get an idea of where they are or what the setting or the plot, the Backdrop yeah. is for this place, but the problem was the it just the people who are watching these sort of programs are the people who probably would quite like a sort of info dump really, and the thing about having a magic school is it is then you're in the perfect position to just have a lesson and explain all the magic. You oh. can do that, and that's fine. It fits in with the plot. It's a bit uninspired maybe, but it makes sense. It's organic. Or have a sort of, yeah, a lesson or an assembly just explaining yeah. the magic system or explaining yeah. the school itself. I mean, it's a bit difficult because obviously Bloom's from Earth and everyone else seems to be from one of these other realms where, like, yeah, they seem to know magic, but, I don't know. Well, the, the first scene in Farrah's office, I, I expected her hmm. to sort of go into a little bit yeah. for Bloom so she understands a bit, but no. All she said was, ah, oh, the, the, the fairies used to have wings, but that's an ancient magic we've forgotten. And that's that's what you're gonna do. <laughs> that's only really paid off at the end, and it's not particularly very interesting. Yeah. Um, Stella says that magic is linked to your emotions, but that's okay. A like every other magic ever. Yeah. And B not very specific. Like mm. so then um, th- th- uh, well, a that the magic was meant to be really slow, like slow to learn it. Mm. Except they were able to do magic really quickly, so that's a bit odd. Um, yeah, I wanted to know more specifically what each, like, if there were other types of magic apart from elemental fairies, because yeah, those were know. the only ones mentioned in the yeah. school. It was, uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was just the elemental fairies. A maybe there were more elemental fairies because again that lesson didn't mention all of them because it didn't mention the light fairies. So other other ones. Um, can fairies do other magic that isn't related to the element because? The Faris seemed to be able to because she did all sorts of random stuff. She could do whatever. Yeah. Unelemental. Um, because I think if you can have elemental fairies being the main magic system, every magic user should be obvious what their element is. Based on their. Based on how they use magic, yeah. and it wasn't. And again, it was like the old air magic. You can like do air stuff and also make lightning. Um, and all they did was that was whenever. Beatrix was using magic, they just put lightning around her fingers and they just, you know, she could open the doors and she could lift the thing and she could make the world appear. I think that would be a light magic thing right. to break the illusion. But Okay, never so mind. So air magic is the only thing, you just you can get a lightning around your fingers. Um, but, uh, so that was just irritating. The control thing, Bloom could control magic when she needed to, but it's out of control when she needed it, when the plot needed it to be out hmm. of control. So there was no sense of progress with learning yeah, su- anyone, but suddenly from, I think it was the third or fourth or fourth to fifth episode, suddenly there was a huge, there felt like a huge jump where, oh, all of a sudden they, they sort of mastered their abilities almost. Or... Well, there was a one one episode, I forget which it was, starts with them like learning, like they're all sort of military training combat stuff, aren't they? Mm. Because I think that's when they realise there's more than one burnt one out there. I think that was episode five, yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, four or five, wasn't it? Um... I'm not quite sure how much time it passed, but she suddenly seemed to be pretty alright with the fire. And she was alright, actually, in the third episode, because when they went to get the ring back, she was, like, pretty happy to just send a wave of flame mm. there, wasn't she? Yeah, so... so she seemed to suddenly control it, fine. 
So there's no sense of progression. Um, and then what magic did Rosalind teach her at the end? Because Farrah was like, oh, Rosalind obviously teach her, taught her some magic which allowed her to unlock this ancient magic with the wings. But all Rosalind said was like, dig deeper. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean anything. <laughs> did, did no fairy think could just dig deeper? Uh, a, a, a lot of the thing is all magic, but it, there's also a lot of technology in this world, which oh, is the yeah. thing that bugs me a lot. So they had, Fine they had mobile stuff. phones, they had Wi-Fi, they had all of this stuff, yet all of the soldiers had swords. Yeah, yeah no one was using guns. Like, I mean, get a bazooka. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get get a ton of guns, get a ton of flamethrowers. You can <laughs> defeat the burned ones with them. I mean, yeah, they would be a lot Jeez. more effective. You've even got cars. You've got, oh my goodness, and the yeah. the armor as well. It was basically oh like just Earth. It was it was like Europe. Yeah. Um, culturally as well, like they didn't seem to have their own culture. No, it was there, there was no like I don't know books or music or that was their world because they were talking about Harry Potter. I was like, do you, did the fairies? Read Harry Potter. And How do they get a hold of it? Do, do they? Do the other no authors in the fairy world that they read? And all <laughs> of the so pop weird. music in all of the party That's scenes terrible. and oh my goodness. Blech. I'm not saying they've got to write, write their own soundtrack for every single piece of music. No, that's a but, lot of effort, but but you need a culture surrounding your universe. Otherwise, it's yeah. it may as well just be set on earth. Yeah, I don't know why it wasn't set on earth to be honest. It had just been yeah. yeah. Okay, just have like a Hogwarts, like it's a hidden school. Yeah, that and would just, have worked perfectly. Yeah, like have it in California if you want it to be. They don't try and make that make sense because like it's not a very English school. No, um, just have it in American accents rather than just like English accents. Um, also lucky they speak English rather than. This is all stuff that's actually come from the cartoon, but it's a cartoon. You, no one cares. Yeah, you People don't. You don't expect cartoons. quite so much from. If you're gonna make yeah, it like continue. live action and gritty and dark, you you need to give it a stronger foundation because the people watching it are gonna be a little bit more interested in how it all works. Hmm. Um, you know, you're not just gonna be like, oh, well, it's a new kids cartoon because it's not. So, so that was a bit irritating. Um, I didn't quite get how the stone circle powered the electricity. Yeah, that it sort of just suggested that the the magic is powering from the earth mm. is powering the school and i guess that could be air magic like you you drew it from the land into the lights and you made a connection Ye- but but it's... again this is why you kind of needed i almost wanted the like a lesson at the beginning where they kind of go through all the different types of magic and you'd be like oh there's fairies who's elemental magic and then maybe there's like other types of magic people who like do other things and then there's wild magic, which is unpredictable, and also, you know, some very powerful fairy founded the school and managed to make the magic power that... I don't care, just put that in if you really want, but, like, don't chuck it in at the end. And also, hey, maybe you can mention the Blood Witches, so that um, at the end, when they go, oh, the town's full of Blood Witches, we would be like... Oh, oh that means something! Oh, I've heard about them, they were nasty. Rather than, what's what a Blood Witch? <laughs> Are we meant to hate them? Apparently, we're meant to hate them. Are we happy they're dead? <laughs> that seems a bit mean. I don't want to be happy someone's dead. So, yeah. <laughs> and, we're like, going to history about the burned ones, like, what What are they? Are there other magical threats? Are, is the school just fairies and humans? That's what it seems like. Because the boys... By the way, the fighting class, we only see most of boys doing it, don't we? Well, yeah, The it's... main characters, who are men, which is Sky, Smokey and Dane. Yeah. They're, all, all, they're just, all just fighting. Like, they don't do any magic. And all the main characters who are girls... Do all the, ma- do all the magic yeah. stuff. It's a little bit odd. <laughs> and for some reason, they need just non-magic people fighting alongside the magic users to protect Same them. Pointless. Even though you could just train up the magic users to fight alongside to protect themselves. It seems to be the only time the, the burned ones were killed was by a magic person. So I don't get the point of the humans at all. Like, yeah, just, what they're doing. Like, they can't kill them, apparently. They just, can't bother to use guns to blow their heads off. Just team up one magic user with another magic user because it seems like a couple of them could quite easily take out a burned one, whereas a burnt one or a couple of burnt ones or a group of them can easily take out a ton and ton of troops. Yeah. Also, guys, get better armour. Like, you get infected when it scratches you and they're all like, oh, our armour is a strip of leather that protects one nipple. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> so if it Very scratches stupid. you there, you're fine. If it scratches anywhere else, you're dead. Very stupid armour. <laughs> anyway. Um, I think that's all of my points on it. Uh, I, oh, it's wow. exhausting. I had so many like opinions, but I don't remember them all now. Have I written anything else down here? Um, mm. Oh, is Tinkerbell real? Is Tinkerbell she real? She keeps mentioning Tinkerbell. Like, I'm expecting a school of Tinkerbells. And then at one point, the headmistress just goes, Tinkerbell was an air fairy, by the way. And you're like, what? Okay, tink- Tinkerbell's uh, a thing. She was a tinkering fairy, actually, if you read, if you watch the Disney films. Well, <laughs> maybe it needs a crossover with uh, Peter Pan. No, there's Disney films about Tinkerbell. Oh, yes. Uh, and there's like a fairy, and there were like different types of... There's like fire fairies and stuff. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> she's a tinkering fairy. <laughs> but no, she's an air fairy, because she was definitely real. And I had electricity powers. Don't know if you remember that in Peter Pan. Oh, yeah. Her electricity powers. Definitely. Anyway. <laughs> on that note, I think <laughs> it's time to wrap it up. Uh, we don't recommend this series no, at all. No, it was pretty stupid. It's the most generic, high... For some reason, this is now a genre of magic high school teen drama yeah. series, Ugh. which is also some perilous fantasy dangerous thing. Of the order, but for I don't know, yeah, female yeah. main character or a male one. If you've watched the order, yeah, that's mm. it's mm. so similar to that in a lot. Order a lot of was ways. a bit better though, because at least I kind of knew what the main character wanted to do. Even though it had the same issues of having trying to make everything a mystery, and you don't understand the way Just the school works. Tell me something, yeah, please. <laughs> this one, I think, the only thing this one did reasonably well is the threat level of the yeah, burned ones. They were quite threatening. Yeah, they just freaked me out. I didn't like them. They, yeah, they they were quite threatening because you yeah. saw how much chaos they caused. Yeah, you saw how how horribly they murdered as well. Like the murder scenes, mm, really nightmarish. And they them, they were just like people, but they were like burnt, black and raw, weren't they? But but that's the only praise like, I can give this. Yeah. That that it only really deserves like a one or two out of ten let's be honest <laughs> it, it was pretty bad um yeah are you gonna watch the second season when it comes out probably not <laughs> it's gonna be more of the same let's be honest yeah, i'll see what it's about. i don't know i kind of almost want to see if they get any better but it's, maybe we'll do it just to mm. rant about it we'll see yeah. <laughs> i'm actually exhausted now yeah that was um yeah i think that's all we can say about it really isn't it Nothing else is coming to mind. So yeah, we'll we'll see if we rant about more things in the future in probably an overly long video. I've no idea how long this is. It's mm. probably like an hour. Oh, geez, oh, <laughs> we'll see. Who would want to listen to our lovely voices for an hour? I know, us talking over each other. <laughs> Oops. So we'll leave that there and um, thank you for watching if you're yeah. still there. <laughs> and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Yeah. Bye. <laughs>